Does Satan know our thoughts? I had some friends on social media dig deep for the answer. Find out what they had to say. You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net. Rocks of revelation being poured out to you. My passion is for you to have a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. Now today, it's kind of interesting, kind of different, kind of hip, kind of new wave. It's awesome. I was having an interesting discussion with some friends on Voxer, and the discussion prompted me to wonder... If Satan can read my mind. So I put a post up on several of my social media networks like Twitter, Google Plus, and Facebook. And I got some really good thought-provoking comments. And I want to share them with you. Does Satan know our thoughts? Now, Stephen Barrett said uh, on Facebook, Satan is a tempter. And he puts in the, the Bible verse, 1 Corinthians 7, 5. And that verse says, defraud ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Stephen goes on to say, he works in the realm of the heart and the mind. Now, my response to that is, the heart, um, when I think of the heart, of course, there's the physical heart. But I think that Stephen's talking about as a man thinks in his heart. So is he. So here we can see that Stephen's talking about Satan influences our thought life. Right? Then he puts uh, the verse Acts 5.3 and says, Nowhere in Scripture does Satan have premonition, foreknowledge, or enhanced personal information. We see with Job, he has to gather info. Now in Acts 5.3, Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart? to lie to the Holy Spirit. So we can see that the devil has the ability to put something in your heart to cause you to do something, to cause you to lie. I mean, of course, you have the door. Sin lies at the door, Genesis 4, 7. You know, we need to rule over it. And then it says to keep back part of yourself for the proceeds from the sale of the land. I'm going to kind of agree here uh, with Stephen. Uh, that these verses don't really prove that Satan can read our thoughts, but he can plant lies into our hearts. Robert Nolan from Facebook says he doesn't have to know our thoughts. He can tell what we're thinking by what we say and how we conduct ourselves. We forget that he's much more intelligent than we are. Now, as I was talking to Susan about this, you know, Satan's really, really old. Who knows how old? And he's had a lot of time to study human beings. One of the things that Robert's talking about is that he can, you know, he can tell what we're thinking by what we say and how we conduct ourselves. Now, many of you don't know this, but I used to, I used to play cards, and at a very early age, I figured stuff out. You know, statistically, people would do things like if they hit their hand, you know, if they hit their straight flush or whatever, the first thing they'll do is they'll look down at their chips and then look away (laughs) because they're thinking, how much can I bet? (laughs) You know, also, if you look at people, the way they they hold their cards, they have a tendency to put their large cards uh, on the left, usually, and they organize their cards from big to small. If you just watch them and you watch what they play, you can tell what's bigger on one side and what's smaller on the other. So Satan, and then they also speak a certain way, you know. There's tells in poker, and then the devil knows our tells. So I'm going to agree with Robert Nolan on that. Bobby Caps simply posts his scripture, and it's a good one. 1 Corinthians 2.11, For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him? And that was on Facebook. I believe that in the tenor of that verse, I believe that, that Bobby's referring to the Spirit of God. But, you know, I stepped back and I thought about it. Demons are spirits, too. 1 Samuel 16, 14, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, right? There's the Spirit of the Lord. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So the question is, you know, 
what does this verse in 1 Corinthians 2.11 mean? You know, I, I believe it's exclusive to the to the Spirit of God. That's what I feel, you know, because I, I, I don't see the rest of Scripture saying a demon can know your thoughts. But they are spirits. We've heard of familiar spirits. Robert Dale says, good question. No, I don't see anywhere in Scripture where it says Satan can read our minds. And that's pretty much the focus of this question. However, with that said, I do think Satan is very shrewd and can read lots of circumstantial evidence. Pretty much like Robert was saying, in us and on us. Robert goes on to say something here. He says, Satan has one more advantage in the spiritual realm. Um, He believes that, that the devils know what our calling must be or our calling may be, or our spiritual condition or predisposition. You know, I'm going to step back and think about that. Um, I I believe that's possible. I don't know if I wholeheartedly um, jump on that with with hook, line, and sinker. But, you know, I do believe in my belief system that Satan can watch our body language and know what we're up to. I also believe that, you know, since demons, you know, when, when Jesus casts out a demon or people cast out demons today... It's an unseen entity that lives in the spiritual supernatural realm. So if they live in the spiritual supernatural realm and they're looking for houses in the physical realm, I mean, it only makes sense that they probably can observe us spiritually probably better than we can. So if we think about how Adam, when he was in the garden, before he fell, you know, it says when you fall, your eyes are going to be open. So then before his physical eyes were open, I believe Adam was walking in the fullness of the spiritual realm. And then, after that, he had to live off the sweat of his brow. So I'm going to say that makes some some sense there. And it also pretty much sums up the poker playing analogy that I was talking about earlier. Darrell Mosley from Facebook says something kind of funny. He says, he don't have to. He just reads our Facebook. People let out all their heart on there. That's so right on. You know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And one of the things that when he said that, you know, I, I keep thinking about how um, the shepherds were announcing what was going to happen with Jesus. And, you know, it says in Luke chapter 2, a couple of verses here, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. In Luke 2.51, uh, his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. So I always wondered, why is Mary keeping these things in her heart? And it could be because Jesus says later, you know, when he grows up, he says, don't cast your pearls before swine. And, you know, the Lord says, I will hide your word in my heart. That could be the prophetic word. That could be the rhema word. That could be the logos word so that I do not sin against you. And I'm thinking sometimes we just need to commune in our spirits with God. And if we start showing our pearls to other people, then bam, they, they rend us and trample upon us. You know, not everyone has to hear everything that we think. I'm not sure she did this because demons can read her mind. But I I wanted to share that with you. Nancy Reyes um, basically says that she thinks Satan does. And then at the end of her, her paragraph here, she says, Where do you think the bad thoughts come from? And we battle between good and evil, and God said, put on his own armor. And that was said for a reason, to keep the fiery darts away. Now... I'm going to agree, obviously, you know, from that scripture earlier, how has Satan, why has Satan filled your heart, right? Where do you think bad thoughts come from? But the fiery darts of Satan, that's the shield of faith, is supposed to quench all the fiery darts, right? In Ephesians chapter 6. And also notice that there's a helmet of salvation. The helmet is designed to keep outside influences from coming into our head. We're supposed to put on the helmet of salvation. That's something that we do. It's not designed to keep our brains from spilling out. You see what I'm saying? So I don't think that uh, that this Ephesians 6 thing it is uh, a way of saying that the devil can read our mind. You know, but but he can plant seeds in our mind. I think scripture is pretty clear about that. Jackie Fiesel from Facebook comes up with a really compelling argument that brings up another thought, a chain of thought here. Jackie says, if he knew Job's thoughts, he would have known what he would have done rather than try to convince God that he would curse him because of the trials 
and would not have tempted Jesus. Satan's a tempter, only God knows, and is the discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Well, that first sentence there, if he knew Job's thoughts, he would have known what he would have done. Now, just because you know someone's thoughts, I mean, I believe this is a very persuasive, compelling point, but there's a very big difference between mind reading and predicting the future, right? And this even happens in the prophetic realm today. A lot of people, um, you know, words of knowledge and words of wisdom fall under the umbrella of the prophetic. However, um, if you see psychics and mediums, they are talking to familiar spirits, which we'll get into in a second in this next comment, and they masquerade as words of knowledge. And this goes on to, it, it has nothing to do with predicting the future. Stephen Harris from Google Plus uh, says, yes, unless you keep your mind under the blood. Now, that's very good. You know, who shall abide under the shadow of the wings of Almighty God? You know, we need to get underneath Come under the mission of God, submit to God, and then resist the devil and he will flee. It means we need to come under the umbrella of God, not be outside of his will. As Psalm 91 protection is what Stephen's talking about. Otherwise, he, he continues, otherwise spirits of divination could not pass off thought reading as word of knowledge. Now, here's where Stephen is saying that the, the psychics and the mediums, the diviners, are reading people's thoughts. And this is where I'm going to kind of kind of say I disagree Uh, but continue on temptations would interrupt your thoughts rather than appearing when you were idle between them consider the girl who followed the apostles and proclaiming they were from God in contrast like Job Satan could predict what Job would do with his wisdom but he was proven incorrect because of the hedge now here he says the spirits of divination could not pass off thought reading now I, I disagree that that's thought reading. And I've watched a couple of, uh, you know, I know I'm not supposed to, but in my life I have messed up and I watched, I, I visited psychics, okay? I've seen psychics that have blown my mind. They knew stuff about me. And uh, this is this is BC, you know, before, before Christ type life. And also I've watched some on TV and I, I hear what they say. They say, I believe what they are telling me. Now, we know that there are familiar spirits. And the familiar spirits, look at the word family, familiar family. These are demons that are assigned to carry out the curse that Solomon talks about, the curse causeless shall not alight. And it's referring to the curse of the third and fourth generation of those that hate God. These spirits know everything about you. These familiar spirits, they know everything about you. So when they're talking to like someone at the Witch of Endor, or they're talking to a, a psychic today, they're masquerading as a, a loved one that's already went on. Okay, They're trying to tell you that, hey, you know, you can die. You can go to the other side. It's going to be fine. You don't have to read the Bible. You know, it's good. This whole New Age thing is right. But there are familiar spirits relaying the information. And that's why when we're out there doing the prophetic uh, evangelism, one of the things that I'm, um, I'm working on is where is this source of information? Now, I talk over and over and over about having our senses exercised by reason of use. The more and more we pray for people the more and more I can find out where this information is coming from. I can find out if, like in Jeremiah 14 or in Ezekiel, it says, this is a lie from my own heart. A lot of times we will, you know, we'll have a thought come up and it comes from us. And that's dangerous, right? Number two, it can come from a demon. Demons love to expose themselves. (laughs) You know, they'll say things like blood sugar, blood sugar, blood sugar. Or whatever, you know, and you're like, oh, well, that's a demon. And then there's God telling you something about the person. And then there's the person. And I, I call this like spiritual body odor, uh, kind of like what Stephen is saying here. Um, and I don't really understand the nuts and bolts of this, exactly how it works. But it's like the person is putting off a thought. Like, for instance, I was sitting next to this lady. In a restaurant. This is just one example of many. Uh, It's just one that always comes to mind when I talk about this. This one lady is sitting next to me, and I kept, I'm trying to eat my food, and just like TV in the spirit, I kept seeing this this house with a white picket fence. And it just persists. And I've learned that if something persists, it's something you really need to talk to that person about. So I finally said, hey, what's the significance of about a blue house with white trim and a white picket fence. She goes, I've been praying to the Lord for that type of house. That's the one I want. 
So here she is. She's depositing a prayer in the spirit realm. How did I pick up on that? Right? I mean, you know what I mean? (laughs) So I like to call it spiritual body odor. And this, you know, when I say that, it's not an eloquent way of putting it, but it's something that's resonating off of them. Now, did God remove the veil? You know, that's, that's something. But can the demons see this? Right? Can the demons know that she's been praying for it? Can the demons go inside someone's bedroom and listen to their prayers? For some reason, I feel that it's off limits for the devil to listen to us pray. You know, it's because I'm under the blood. I'm under the shadow of Almighty God. But, you know, Satan, Satan stands before God. Look in the book of Job. And he even talks to God. Satan asks Jesus for permission to sift Peter as wheat. Amen? Think about that. Satan, in the book of Zechariah, uh, is accusing Joshua before the throne day and night. And Joshua, the high priest, God says, hey, you know what? Just uh, put put on some new clothes. Let's take off these raggedy clothes and just put them on. You know, I believe the devil's just the unwilling servant for God. But does Satan know our thoughts? I just, I don't, I don't think so. Ron Williams from Facebook says, I don't believe he knows our thoughts. One, because he's not omnipresent. And this is a common theme. If you look at the Facebook post, I'll put the link in here. One, because he's not omnipresent. And two, because of free will. Now, his minions definitely study us intimately. They study our strengths and our weaknesses and fool us into believing they have our best interests at heart. Just look at the TV show Crossing Over where the medium is told intimate details about a loved one who's deceased. The Bible says we're immediately appointed one of two places when we die. Any spirit who claims to be a loved one is just a demon doing Satan's bidding, lying and deceiving. So, of course, I'm going to echo my sentiment there that that's the familiar spirits. Now, uh, there's a couple of other uh, responses on Twitter. Ninuola Alua, I'm pretty sure I'm not pronouncing her name correctly. She says, only God knows her thoughts, and she quotes First Chronicle 28, 9, or she refers to it. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understandeth all the imagination's thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found by thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Now, the issue I'm going to take here is, yes, we know that God knows our thoughts. We know that God tries the reins. We can't hide from the Lord. But the question is, does Satan know our thoughts? Does he hear them? Does he read our mind? I'm going to say, while this is a good tweet, I don't think it proves that Satan doesn't read our mind. It doesn't prove that he does read our mind. Uh, Info Don has a really good tweet in response to this. No, but as Lewis pointed out in Screw Tapes, he knows humans very well from thousands of years of observation and warfare against us. So, yep, I believe that uh, that's something Susan and I were talking about. The devil's very old. He knows what's up. I mean, he can just tell by looking at us what we're thinking. So finally, at the end of this here, uh, I want to let you know that I went to gotquestions.org and there was an article can Satan read minds? I'll put the link in the article to the show notes, and you can see what God Questions has to say about it. And as a thank you for listening to this podcast for a limited time, you can get two free audiobooks for trying out this service. I'm going to put the link in the show notes. So if you want two free audiobooks, check out the link on the show notes, and you get two free audiobooks for trying out this new service. God bless you. I want to thank you for being in my life. If you have any prayer requests, send them to me via email conrad at conradrocks.net and if you have any show topics you'd like to see me go over just send me an email conrad at conradrocks.net god bless you i want to thank you for being in my life until we meet again dig deeper and go higher dig deeper go higher at conradrocks.net